last time we talked about the three eyes that are recommended to prevent the incidence of tb among hiv patients so that those three eyes were in intensified case finding infection control practices that is airborne infection control practices uh, that is done at the ARTs and all and the third one is IPT that is isoniazid preventive therapy or isoniazid prophylactic therapy so we do intensified case finding in adults as well as children based on the four symptom complex so these four symptom complex are so in adult i have already said that uh, concurrent cough fever weight loss and night sweats and in children also the four symptom complex is there fever is there cough these two are common and the other instead of weight loss it is poor weight gain and it is contact with the tb case in these cases if these symptoms are not there if these symptoms are not there the four symptoms if these symptoms are not there fever cough weight loss and night sweat if these symptoms are not there then it is not possible that they are having tb it's probably they are not having tb in these cases you would I, in the last video i said you would check for any contraindications for ipt if there is no contraindication for ipt then you would consider the ipt right isoniazid prophylactic therapy so why why are you giving ipt in several studies it has proved efficacy that it the progression from the latent tb to active tb so first one it prevents reactivation of tb prevents progression from the latent tb to an active tb or tb disease so it prevents this and second one is prevents the reinfection so prevent the reinfection it prevents the reinfection post exposure to an open case of tb so it prevents reactivation and reinfection so it has proven benefits and uh, ipt when used along with art in some studies has shown increased benefit and ipt is of extra benefit in hiv positive individuals to prevent them from tb and also in tst positive individuals in tuberculin skin test positive individual also the ipt therapy has very high benefit right uh, to prevent the reactivation and to prevent the reinfection but as the part of the program for giving ipt we are just screening for the four symptom complex and confirming that there is the patient is not having tb disease in tb disease you will not give ipt you will start the treatment for tb so and in the program tst is not done because that's an extra test and an extra burden so it's due to the logistic difficulties we are not doing that now to whom all you are giving ipt so adults and adolescents adolescents means 10 to 19 years of age and after that adult so adults and adolescents who are living with hiv adults and adolescents who are living with hiv are given uh, this they are screened for this symptom complex current cough fever weight loss and night sweats and if they are not uh, present they are unlikely to have an active tb and they are given ipt what is the dose the dosage is isoniazid 300 mg plus pyridoxine 50 mg pyridoxine is vitamin b6 this is uh, this is the this per day for a minimum of 6 months and can 
like WHO says it can be up to nine months, but for a minimum under the NTEP program, it is for six months. It should be given minimum of six months to prevent the reactivation and reinfection. But still, the HIV individuals have a considerable increased risk than the normal population. It is not that the uh, risk is completely gone. Then second one is, this is the first recommendation. Second is children living with HIV. So children living means uh, like more than 12 months up to 10 years. And some areas I also saw, uh, saw that less than 30 kilogram also it comes under this group, right? Uh, if the weight is less than 30 kilogram, but in the uh, data, in the NTP document, I didn't see that. The dose, in these people also, you screen for the symptom complex fever, current cough, weight, uh, no weight gain and uh, the contact with the TB case. If that is not there, most probably uh, the child is not having TB and uh, if there is no symptoms, it's not having TB, then your dose is INH 10 mg per kilogram per day plus pyridoxine is given 25 mg and it is also given for six months so this is one day dose and in children there is one more criteria so children who had tb previously right t children living with hiv who had tb who had tb disease and now treated and uh, now they are free of the tb disease should those treated and cured cases also should receive inh for six months they also should receive inh for six months now why is this pyridoxine given the pyridoxine is given to prevent the peripheral neuropathy Pyridoxine is nothing but vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 uh, is required for the synthesis of several neurotransmitters like GABA, serotonin, etc. So they are responsible for, they are needed for the synthesis of neurotransmitter. And once they enter the body, they are activated by several enzymes. And they are used for the synthesis of neurotransmitter. This isony acid. They acts and inhibits this enzyme. Isoniacid acts and inhibits this enzyme. Also, isoniacid competes with these enzymes, inactivates these enzymes, and thus decreases the neurotransmitter. So, an increased amount. So, a competitive inhibition is also there. So, an increased amount of pyridoxine is required to prevent the peripheral neuropathy. Next, so some of the other recommendations for the isoniacid pro prophylactic therapy are IPT is also given for TST positive children in immunosuppressive therapy. Immunoposite, uh, immunosuppressive therapy and also it is given to uh, children born to a mother with TB in pregnancy. And it is also after rolling out congenital TB. IPT is never given to a TB child, right? It, these are all done after rolling out TB. And it is in some areas, it is, in some resources, it is also said that 
this ipt is given to close contacts of tb patient right in children less than 6 years close contact to tb patient all these are done after ruling out tb like in this case if a uh, child is born to a tb mother then uh, after rolling out congenital tb only it's given and ipt will not cause any resistance if we are using it for the treatment of the same patient so no problem of resistance is there so our uh, steps that are taken for given ipt are first the tb symptom uh, screening is done at the ART center, Linge ART center, ICTC center, or among the high risk groups. Next, if uh, like intensified case finding bar screening, if it is asymptomatic, then only we would consider IPT. If it is asymptomatic, consider IPT. And consider IPT if there is no contraindication. If it is symptomatic, of course, you have to uh, look for TB. If not there, if look for alternative diagnosis. And if not, if alternative diagnosis also not present, if present, then treat. If not present, then IPT is considered. Here, if there is asymptomatic and no contraindications, then IPT considered monthly collection of IPT is done from ART centers or Ling ART centers, ART plus centers or those patients that are not visiting the ART centers, they can collect it from the standalone ICTCs. Uh, those that are visiting the pre-ART centers and not the ART centers can collect it from the standalone ICTCs. So this is about the IPT. If you like my effort, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you.